Uh, welcome back, everyone. I hope that you were able to walk around and take a little break. We are um, very happy to have Kadre Jamil, and I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, and um, Jack Gordon from the Disability Hub joining us today. I'm really excited myself to learn about the vault and how to use it. And I think about the tools that we just learned about from Jane St. John and how we might be able to use the vault to be able to share those tools. So I'm really excited to have you both with us and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so my name is Jack and I definitely appreciate you guys having us here today. We're excited to talk to you all. Um, I've been with the hub for about seven years. I was uh, an options counselor starting out and then uh, recently moved to the community capacity builder role, which is doing presentations like this with you all. Hello, I am Kadra Jamali. Um, don't worry about mispronouncing my name. It's yeah, I get it all the time, but I'm also a community capacity builder with Disability Hub MN. I've been with them um, six years now. I'm new to this community capacity builder role. Um, so for the most uh, part in my job with the hub, I was a work and benefits planner. Um, so I'm a certified um, uh, work incentive uh, counselor so I can help people with disabilities that are interested in working, understand how work will impact their benefits. So did you guys want me to start the presentation or? Yeah, I think we're ready. Okay. Uh, so what is Disability Hub MN? Um, we used to go by the Disability Linkage Line. Uh, in 2017, we had a rebranding. Um, so just we changed our name to Disability Hub MN, um, but we still provide the same services. Uh, our phone number is still the same. Um, it's a free statewide resource network here in Minnesota. Um, we um, do help people outside of Minnesota sometimes, but um, we mainly help people in Minnesota. Um, we uh, are a simple single access point. We provide a safe, neutral, and trusted resource. Um, and then we also provide a comprehensive service. So we help people put the pieces together when um, they come to us and they're just kind of not understanding how you know, a certain situation is playing out for them or they're just kind of falling, falling through the gaps um, in the system. Um, our team, uh, there's a picture of uh, one of our coworkers, Tabiso, uh, on here. Um, he's also part of the community engagement team. Um, so we provide person-centered training to all of our options counselors um, so they can help um, our consumers Meet, meet their needs on their level, um, find out what's important to them. Um, some of our OCs have additional credentialing um, in other areas of expertise. Like for instance, we have work and benefits planners that are certified um, work incentive counselors. Um, and then we also have different levels of options counselors. We've got options, um, option counselor seniors or OCs. So for short, it's just easier for us to say it that way. Um, and then we've got the experts um, who do work in benefits planning. And we are in multiple communities across Minnesota. So we all work remote from home. Um, so we've got, you know, people all the way in North, Northern Minnesota, like Bemidji, and then, you know, there's people like me in Rochester, and then we've got people in the Metro. So it's nice to have everyone kind of spread out in all over Minnesota. They can bring um, resources that are available in their community that we might not be able to find online or in our database. Um, so in 2022, um, the, this is a slide of just the contacts and how we um, communicated with our consumers, um, 74,463 contacts, um, which we served 23,233 people. Um, the majority of those contacts were, are done by phone calls. Um, so 58% and then emails were 16% and then chats are 8%. Uh, who we help. So we help anyone regardless of the disability. I just want to um, get that point across because we always get calls about um, who 
who do we help and do I have to have a disability? Not necessarily. So regardless of your situation, um, we do our best to try to help people. Um, mainly we do help case managers and social workers uh, throughout the state, um, as well as ed education professionals, um, employment support professionals, and then anyone in a supportive role like caregivers, families, friends, um, neighbors, and also self-advocates. Um, you can really ask us anything at the Hub. Um, some of the questions that we get are like, what are my health insurance options? Um, right now with the MA renewal going out, you know, we're getting a lot of calls about that. Um, sometimes people are new to Medicare and they don't understand, you know, why do I need this? So we help them understand their options and if they're still able to keep other health insurances and just let them know how um, all of those insurances will work together, what's going to be primary, what's going to be secondary. Um, we also support people in finding community resources. Um, there's a website that I'll, we'll show you later um, that we use um, to help find resources right there in your community or close to, um, if there are resources, hopefully. Um, can I live where I want and get the help I need is a, you know, a question that we also get a lot. Um, a lot of the times, some people, maybe they're not happy in their living situation or maybe they're needing to live somewhere um, with supports because something has changed. Um, so they're needing that. So we have resources to help them find somewhere to live and also get the support they need. Um, support and understanding what person-centeredness means to me. Um, so that person-centered training that all of the OCs receive um, really helps us with um, uh, discussing that when we have uh, our callers on the line. Um, can I work or work more? And so earlier I mentioned the work and benefits planners. Um, they do a lot of that with people who are on social security benefits and state benefits like MA. Um, so we help them understand how they can work more and um, get that myth out of their head that they're gonna lose their benefit or they're not gonna make as much money. So it's always a nice conversation to have with people to let them know you can make more money and still keep your benefits. Um, we help troubleshoot issues with benefits and understand them. Uh, we have like a response center through DHS that we can chat with um, that can look into the state systems if they've got a you know medical assistance case open or even like a food support case we can get some identifiers from them and permission of course to look up these benefits and then just kind of get some real time information on what's going on what's active what's ending. Um, so frequent topics um, from last year that we help people. Um, health benefits, like I mentioned earlier, Medicare, Minnesota Care, medical assistance, um, cash benefits like MSA or um, general assistance or MFIB, health and wellness, um, MA programs and services, and then also uh, our Disability Hub MN website, which is uh, pretty new, and then the DB101 website an HB 101 website um, were also topics that we went over with uh, our callers. And then lastly, housing and shelter. Uh, so how we might help, um, like I said earlier, we can help contact um, the county or find out if someone has a financial worker assigned to them um, and just connect them to that agency or the service that they're needing. Uh, we support people in contacting other organizations as well. So if they're needing like you know, just kind of someone to advocate for them over the phone, we are happy to do that, um, just to make sure that they're getting their needs met. Um, also understanding available options so a decision can be made. We try our best if there are several options to let people know, you know, these are your options. You don't just have to do this one thing. It doesn't have to be this one way. So we, we make sure that we give people as many options as there are possible. Um, we also offer one-to-one, -one, um, we work uh, with people uh, in like a follow along program that we have and our uh, OC seniors and OC experts can work with people who have like several goals and we can't really solve their issue in one or two phone calls. So um, we have a referral system to get them connected to those OCs that can help them meet those goals. Um, we help build knowledge around benefits, programs and tools uh, for personal and professional success. Um, some of the helpful hub tools um, that Jack is gonna show you guys in more detail that we use to help our callers, our Disability Hub MN website. Um, and 
another thing about DB 101 and HB 101, they're all like, so it's nice. Um, they're all connected that you can, when you're on one site and Jack will show you guys later that you can jump onto those other sites. Um, the Disability Benefits 101 or DB 101 will have a lot of information about like work and benefits planning, um, a lot of the state and federal benefits and articles that can help you understand those programs more and videos as well. Um, housing Benefits 101, HB 101, a um, little bit similar to DB 101, but it mainly focuses on housing and different situations. Um, my vault, which um, you guys would love to hear more about, and we will go into detail later, um, is across all of those three websites. So when you set up an account, um, it'll be the same username and password, and you can do all these different types of activities um, in the my vault. Uh, Minnesotahelp.info is the website that I mentioned earlier that we help um, people find resources that's in their community or close to them. So it's got um, so much resources that other agencies will come and add um, just so people know that they're providing these services. Um, and then we can refer people by just creating a directory and then either emailing it to them or mailing it to them. Um, Direct Support Connect is kind of like a, a matching website for people um, who need caregivers um, or you know caregivers that are looking for people to support and they can connect that way on that website. So, before I pass it along to Jack, are there any questions that you guys might have? Thank you, Kadra. I'll add that if, if folks wanna um, chat anything along the way, I'm happy to read that out. Yep, and then we can also answer questions at the end of the presentation as well. So I will pass it along to Jack. Do you want me to stop sharing, Jack? Uh, let's see if I can just go ahead and do it. One okay. second. Okay. That's not showing the right web one now. Hold on. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, there we go. So we're going to take a little tour of our websites. Uh, hey Jack, first can I, sorry to interrupt you. We yeah, did no. have a, a question pop up, so, um, and I'll read it out. Do you support those non-English speakers? Great question. Uh, yes, we do. So um, I'll go over a little bit that we do take chats, but we don't have access to interpreters for the chats. But over the phone, we absolutely do have access to interpreters for any language and we can get them on the phone so we can make sure everyone's understanding. Thank you. That's a good question. Does anybody else have any other questions before I dive into the website? All right, well, we'll just keep going, but absolutely, if you have questions, feel free to interrupt chat, uh, go through the chat any way that feels most comfortable for you. We're happy to answer any questions you guys have. Um, so this is our main website, the Disability Hub MN. Um, just a couple things to point out. Uh, there's a link to the chat that we can do online right here, and it will let you know if the chat's open or closed. It also has our phone number and then a link to email us too. So if you're like us and think at 2 a.m., oh, I forgot to ask somebody about this, you can send us an email and we'll get back to you, usually within one or two days. Um, so there's this kind of changing thing down here that has a bunch of different information about health insurance renewals, assistive technology and equipment, and this will change. I just wanna point out you can pause this from switching. So if it's giving you a little motion sickness, you can turn that off. Um, up here, oh, let's actually scroll down a little bit. So it talks a little bit about who we are and what we do at the hub. And then there's some more information down here that it, you'll uh, see we have a lot of information about charting the life course. And I know you guys are familiar with that, so I won't go into that too much. Uh, but we also have more information about waivers, COVID-19 protections ending, uh, E1MN partnership, and more. And like I said, this up, uh, website's fairly updated often, so um, these will be changing depending on what's going on. Um, and then there's just some more resources down here. I'm not going to click into these because I'm going to show you these in a little bit, um, a little bit more. 
Um, if you'd like to get email updates from us, you can uh, sign up right here, the email address. We won't spam you, I promise, but we do send up about quarterly email uh, newsletters and about any updates that might be happening through the hub. Uh, near the top here, we have top topics. Uh, these are these will change depending on what our call trends are. Um, so, but oftentimes medical assistance, Medicare prescriptions and affordable housing, those are probably gonna stay there and, and not really move. Um, but you also see that we have waiver information, transportation, PCA services, SNAP and social security, um, SMERT information for about the, the disability certification, guardianship and alternatives. So there's quite a bit of information on here. Um, and like I said, there's so much information on here. I'm not going to go into everything because you'll be here all day. So um, we'll just kind of pick and choose here. There's another you're under your options. There's health, housing, independence, money, and work. Um, so just to kind of show you what the articles look like a little bit, we'll go into them here. So we'll talk about healthcare coverage options, managing your health. Uh, article specifically around youth, and then again, how the hub can help around health insurance specifically. Um, so if you click into this, it goes into it quite a bit where you can talk about all the different types of MA that's out there, Minnesota Care, Medicare, Employment and Covered Insurance, and all of these have drop down menus and links to other websites um, and more information for each. So it's really handy for that reason. Going up to Hub Tools, we have our Disability Benefits 101 page there. And actually, if you look at the top corner, it's also up there too. So it makes it really easy to navigate back and forth between the sites. The same thing with our Housing Benefits or HB 101, the MyVault, Minnesota Help, and that Direct Support Connect is all there. We also have the char Charting Life Course information and tools right on our website. Um, so you probably recognize the Integrated Star, and some of those other uh, tools that are available as well through the Charting the Life course. There's also a virtual insight panel. So that's for people with disabilities who might be interested in using our services or are using our services. That's a good way for them to give us feedback about what their needs might be, what they wanna see changed in the community um, and anything else. So uh, we often will send out surveys and sometimes we'll have like um, gift cards or uh, another uh, type of incentive to fill them out too. Um, there's a direct link to give feedback back to DHS directly. You can also share our story and we have a new hub events calendar. Um, there's not a ton of information on there yet because um, it's it, it's like a couple weeks old. So, um, but we are going to get that up at some point soon. There we go. All right, and then I want to talk about these two tabs up here. So there's for families and for professionals. Um, the They have very similar information, but it's just laid out a little differently. So for, for the families, um, they have parent supports. Uh, so that could be like respite care, that could be case managers. There's a lot of resources that they pack into this with organizations and planning and advocacy. Um, there's also, again, the charting the life course. So there's another link to that. And then down here, it, it's resources managed by age. Um, so all the way from pregnancy and infancy all the way to aging. Um, and you'll see that they have different resources and different recommendations depending on what age group we're talking about. Um, so in the aging, for example, it'll talk about, you know, Medicare, refer to the senior linkage line for that kind of support. Um, there's legal resources specifically for seniors, um, or if we go back, we'll just do a different age group real quick, let's say school age. Those programs and services are still there, but it's going to be more focused on IEPs, after school programs, child care, stuff again specific to that age group. Um, so that's what's really nice about the, the fa for families page. Moving on to the for professionals, it's similar information, but just again, geared more towards professionals. So don't feel like you can't go in one or the other. You can absolutely use both, both of these. Um, here is the invite to ask us to come and present. So that's right there. 
Um, the benefits planning toolkit is really helpful, especially if you have questions about benefits and work. Um, a lot of our toolkits and information is embed right, embedded right into these articles. Um, so as you can see, it goes through quite each benefit. There's uh, videos. It tells you about how long each section is. Um, and it, it's, it's nice to have it all in one spot. Um, there's also a short video about our vault too, but I'll take you into that. But in case you forget or want to refresh yourself, that video is right there as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to my vault. And I'm already signed in, but I'll show you what it looks like to create a, a My Vault account. Um, so you just click on, the, uh, I did that kind of fast. Let me do that again here. So there's this little link right here that says create an account. And then all you have to do is enter an email, create a password. And if you're with an organization, go ahead and choose one of those organizations. Let's say you work for the county. Um, otherwise, for right now, if you're just for yourself or a loved one, you would just choose none of these. And then that would give you access to a MyVault account. I'm going to re-sign in here, and then I'll show you a little bit more about the MyVault. Um, so the MyVault is a really nice tool, um, and it goes through all three websites, the Hubs website, DB101, and HB101, and I'll show you guys those a little bit later, too. One big difference between the different Vault pages on each of those is that they're page-specific, except for ours. It actually shows all of the activities on our website from all three, um, so that's, a, that's something to note. Um, so there's uh, work paths, which talks about the ability to work. What would that look like for you? What kind of work would you be interested in? What supports and resources you might need? And if you need those supports and resources, who is that team that's going to help you through that? Um, there's the benefits planning path. Um, this one is probably one of the ones most used. Um, the reason for that is you can actually request a benefits lookup from the Department of Human Services. Um, and then once you do that, they will send an encrypted link to your MyVault uh, for those answers. Um, so you can actually request your own data, or if you're working on somebody's behalf, um, you would want to fill out this general consent and authorization form from the Department of Human Services specifically, um, not the hub release. The reason for that is these go directly to the Par Department of Human Services to answer what benefits you might be on. Um, so I just wanted to point that out for you guys. And here's what that release looks like. Another important thing to note, um, there's a section on here to sign for an authorized representative. If you're doing that, just keep in mind that an authorized representative with the county is actually a very specific form to request and fill out. And then you can act on that person's behalf and get all the mailings. But if you're not, if you haven't signed up on that form, you would just want to make sure whoever's benefit you're looking up is the person signing the form, not somebody else. Does that make sense, hopefully? All right, and let me switch back here to our website. So some of the other activities I wanted to mention too, there's a budget plan on here. Um, helping managing your benefits. Um, so there's there's a lot of information that you can you can use and uh, activities that can be really helpful in future planning. Um, this is the HB 101 section. And again, this uh, this has all of those activities. And I'll come back here uh, after we look at HB 101 a little bit more. Um, all right. So oh one more thing I just wanted to point out. Um, if you encounter anything that is broken, like a broken link, it's not working, um, incorrect information, on every page there's a give feedback button. Um, and then you can just enter what you're seeing as the issue, and that will send a link to the Department of Human Services who runs the website, and they can try to get that fixed quickly. Um, the nice thing is it'll, send, it'll show which page you were on um, so they can know where to look to. All right, so that's most of our hub website. Again, there's so much information on here. Uh, feel free to look around and ask us questions. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on to DB101. 
This is the Disability Benefits 101 page. Um, it has a very similar layout, similar easy to understand language. It's just really more focused on those program benefits rather than necessarily life goals and um, putting those benefits embedded into those articles. So just a little different uh, outlook there. Um, but work and benefits right here. And then here are some of the estimator sessions. Um, these are really helpful. So an estimator session is usually about 20 to 30 minutes to take it and fill it out. It's pretty thorough um, and it can give you an answer to show, for example, the work and benefits estimator would show how that SSI, SSDI would be impacted by work um, and you know what, what things to watch out for, when to report. It'll have a lot of that information on there and as well as work incentives that might help as well. Uh, school and work estimator, very similar, but more just geared to school. Um, so that could be looking at other, like uh, the student earned income exclusions and some of those other, other benefits that specifically apply to students. Um, then there's also the MAEPD estimator, which helps give you a premium amount if you were interested in MAEPD as an health insurance. Um, and this, again, scrolling down here, there's some videos that are about three to five minutes long, so they're not an uh, in-depth look, but they give you nice digestible kind of information about each benefit. So SSI, SSI and work, SSI and youth, SSDI, and, and it goes on and on. There's quite a few videos. Uh, so definitely feel free to check them out. Going back up here, there's different tabs I just want to point out. Um, so there's the work and benefits section that as you might guess, goes more in depth into work and benefits, how to build your assets, what is going to work do for your benefits, um, job accommodations and support, and how to manage your benefits while working. So a lot of those other tools, those estimator sessions are already embedded into some of those articles. And then the programs tab, it's, it's similar, but it just lays out the program specifically. So for cash benefits are on the left here, uh, more generalized, what benefits could I qualify for? And that goes into some specifics of SSI, SSDI, MSA, housing, MFIB. And you can see there's quite a few programs listed there. On the right side, we have health insurance. Now this, the finding the right healthcare coverage for you is a really nice tool. It's a fast one. Um, it gives you an idea of what you might qualify for. So just to change things around here, let's say somebody is earning $20,000, they have two people in their household and they have less than $3,000 in assets. So let's say they're not on Medicare, but they do have a disability certification. So we scroll down here and it show you which options that person might have in that situation. So if you go up here and change, let's say they're, they have Medicare and they have a job, suddenly these other options pop up and you can click on each of them or scroll down here to get more information about all of those options. I'm gonna scroll back to the programs tab and just point out a couple other ones. So it has MA, an overview of medical assistance. This means there's a video attached embedded into those articles. And then it goes into the different types of MA like income-based A, income-based MA, disability-based MA, MAEPD, the waiver programs, Medicare, and so forth. And just to kind of show you again what the article looks like, there's a lot of information on here. Just a basic overview. Could this be right for you and your income? These are try it tools, these little icons. And they're faster than estimator sessions, but they'll often just give you a quick overview of what, whatever it is. So in this circumstance, it would give you all of the income guidelines for MA, Minnesota Care, and so forth. Um, just note, it doesn't have the disability-based MA listed here. For that, you do have to scroll down and look at the dis disability determination and then the income and assets separately. All right, scrolling back up here. There's a youth section in DB101. It has more of a focus on youth benefits and how that transitions depending on the youth's age. So the, on the left, these articles are more written and geared towards youth looking into their own benefits. 
And on the right, it's more parents looking into the youth's benefits. So it just talks about them a little differently and has a different, uh, some different concerns. So for example, youth might want to look, look at like, how do I get a higher education? What does work look like? Is that possible? Um, how do I find a job when I do start working? How do I, do I disclose that I have a disability? Do I not disclose I have a disability? So it goes through a lot of that information. The parents focus, it's a lot more about myth busting, of breaking some of those fears that the parents might have that, you know, work would completely annihilate their social security benefit, which isn't true. <laughs> And, you know, a lot of those, you know, when somebody turns 18, what, what happens to those benefits? Uh, what are things to watch out for? So it can be really helpful for, for a lot of that. And then it does have the DB101 exercises for the My Vault. Um, you can also, I didn't mention you can save your contacts. Um, and that's really helpful. Um, let's say you're a transition age student graduating high school. You don't want to lose all those contacts once you lose your high school email. So this could be a really nice, safe way to enter those same contacts and be able to keep those and not lose it when you don't have access to that old email anymore. Um, you can also upload your files. Um, so if you do a benefits lookup, if you do work in, or any of the estimators, they'll come in here too. If you receive something from the county and want to send that to one of your case managers or somebody or a parent or guardian or share that with anybody else, you can do that through here as well. And again, the nice thing is it's all encrypted and safe, so it, it's very protected when, when sent through the vault. All right, so that's a real quick overview of DB101. Do you guys have any questions before I move on to HB101? I don't see anything in the chat. Okay. All right, sounds good. I'll alert you. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, so we'll just go ahead and click the link up here for HB 101. This is for housing benefits. Um, now, the previous two websites, they really had a focus on people with disabilities. This is really specifically for housing. It absolutely includes people with disabilities, but that's not the main focus of it. So in the, this is the home page. Um, you can, talks about the vault right there and a lot of those activities I'll show you in a little bit. There's a link to HB 101 places which we'll get into and that's a nice housing search. Um, homeless services in Minnesota and some of the other like how to keep your housing if you need to move and change your housing what does that look like if you're moving out of facility into the community also what supports might be available. There's the situation page this page goes, it's all the same resources, but it's just, again, uh, laid out just a little bit differently. So if you're looking to find a home and start there, there's the basics, what services might be available to you, what could you apply for, what next steps you can take. Again, moving into the community, kind of very similar layout, you know, can you keep your medical assistance, do waiver services help, what can they do, it will answer a lot of those questions. Uh, changing your home, again, um, very much of you know, looking at what, what other housing options might be available to you. What are you actually looking for? What are some things you don't want? And it really helps you kind of break them down. And then this keeping your housing, uh, it's more about, you know, what, what benefits or resources can you have now? Um, so just to kind of show you a little bit. See there. Yeah. A lot, there's a lot of the links embedded in the article, but again, it looks just a little bit different from the other websites, but there's a very similar layout. All right. And then again, the homelessness services will have like the the entry, uh, coordinated entry and uh, shelters and other information that would be really good for anybody in that situation. The programs page just go, has it sectioned out by program. Um, so, you know, if you're talking about public housing, section eight, section eight voucher, um, assisted living, group homes, it has information about each one of these 
um, both what what is it, what services come with it, how you apply, what resources might might help lead you there, um, and the housing search tools too. HB101 Places, like I said, is more of a housing search. Um, this one specifically works with people who are either looking for services with their housing or are on housing support or might want their waiver to help pay for some of that housing. This is a really great tool for that. Um, it is kept fairly up to date. However, it's based off of the uh, providers to update that information. Um, so some may be more up to date than others. Unfortunately, we don't have too much control about how often people update their own resources. Um, but over here, you can see that you can you can select what it is you're specifically looking for. So if you're a single adult, um, let's say you wanted your caddy waiver to help pay for some things, and you wanted to make sure that smoking is not allowed. So it's going to help filter out those options. And then I'll tell you how many vacancies each option has, what types of services it goes through, and then you can get more details as well. Uh, websites, phone numbers, you know, all of that. Talk about accessibility as well. And sometimes, depending on, they might have pictures to show too. All right, there's, um, we will go back into the My Vault just a second, but just wanted to point out there's a glossary. So if there's any terms that you're unfamiliar with, this does a really nice job of just breaking all of that down for you. All right, so going into My Vault, again, this is since this is HB 101 for housing benefits, it's very housing related. However, there's some activities that really can be helpful across the board. For example, that's that there's that benefits lookup again that can be really helpful um, to get information about what benefits you're currently on. There's who gets to decide what type of housing you have, what your housing ideas are, what you want, what you don't want, some supports you can have. And then there's a communication profile. And that's that can be helpful in a lot of different situations and not just housing. You can think about like the first time you're meeting roommates, that can be helpful, case managers, therapists. Um, if you're moving in for really any situation where you need to communicate and get support, this can be really helpful. Um, so this is an example of one of the completed ones, but you can change this. And all of these activities in the vault are really meant to be used throughout time. So they're meant to be updated and changed as that person's needs change and grow. Um, but here's how I prefer to be reached if it's either face to face or let's say that makes me anxious. So I prefer text messages or emails. Um, you can say like how you like to communicate. You can say sometimes I get negative or I, I really like to make jokes of things to help reduce anxiety or whatever that your needs might be. It's a really good way to do that. When I'm upset, what kind of what that might look like, how I might like to get support if I'm angry or nervous. Um, and so these are some really good starting communications, again, for a lot of different things, not just for housing. There's some a lot of activities too, and again, I don't want to take up all of your time today, so we won't go through all of them. Um, but definitely there's options for paying for your own place, doing a budget, which is, could be helpful for anybody. Um, what are your needs and wants around housing? What, do you have accessibility needs? Do you need grab bars or no step entry, uh, widen doorways, anything like that? And then do you need supports while you're living there? Do you, could uh, like uh, homemaking or PCA services be, be needed or case management? And that goes more into that too. Um, what your regular day looks like, what, what fun do you have in, in your day? And then what if something happens? Um, who do you contact? So just to kind of like it's very similar to those emergency lists that I don't know if you had it, but my mom always had that list again uh, on the wall near the phone. If you know if there's a fire, you call this. If there's something else, you call me. You know, so that's very much what this is. Is you know if I get locked out, who do I contact? You know if the toilet explodes, who do I call? Anything like that. Um, and then it can help you identify like, oh, I, you know, if there's work problems, I feel confident I can handle that. Or 
you know, if there's a tornado, you know, where do I go? Just making sure you have those emergency plans in place. All right. So again, there's there's so much in here. So I definitely encourage you guys to dive into the website, look around and see what you find might be helpful too. And there's so many activities. Um, is there anything that somebody wants to see that we haven't shown yet? All right, well, again, if you guys have questions, um, certainly reach out to us either through the phone, email, or chat. Um, and all of those are on this website as well. Can the, um, can the vault be used for putting in healthcare information? Yes, absolutely. Could you, could you, could you give us some examples around how that might be done? Yeah, so um, are you thinking more like a, like letters somebody might receive or what type of healthcare information were you thinking? Well, can a family, for example, store specific kinds of healthcare information about their child in the vault? Oh, I see. No, I don't think there's, um, like, for example, let's say somebody has an allergy. There isn't anything in the in the vault right now for a space for that. that that's a really good question. Um, if they had, like, a, something written up from their doctor that they wanted to upload and save, then you could absolutely do that in that file section. But there isn't a, a activity around, like, uh, you know, health needs so far. So for example, like my daughter's emergency information form that I share with folks, I could upload that form, but there's, you're saying there's not like a form or a space that asks me specific questions. Is that the difference? Right. Mm -hmm. And then can the information in the vault be shared with other people? Yes, absolutely. So here, let me go back to the My Vault quick. It's gonna take its time to think, there we go. So any of these activities can be shared, but also if you have like the, those benefit lookups, there's this little icon right here and that's how you can share. Um, so you can either enter somebody's email if you don't have it already listed, or if you have them in your contacts, you can just choose it and then send it off that way. Does that help answer your question? Mm -hmm. Can you give us some examples of how families may have used the vault? Yeah, absolutely. So again, with those activities, it's it's really helpful for long-term planning and thinking. Um, looking at benefits is a it's a huge thing to be able to access your own benefits. You know, if you're not sure if your MA ended or if you were approved for a waiver, things like that, that the benefits lookup can be really helpful. And again, that would show up in here, and then you would be able to share that if you wanted to share that with anybody supporting you. Um, and you can upload files too. So if you wanted to, let's say, again, you got a really important mailing, you wanted to put it into your My Vault for keeping and then sharing it, that's absolutely an option too. Um, also, it saves those work and benefits estimators or any other activities you filled out on any of the three websites. Um, so if you wanted to look back and, you know, let's say you were on SSI and wanted to see how, if you made $15 an hour, how would that impact your SSI? That would be saved in there so you can look back at it. again, this is the contacts page. Um, so if you have folks you're working with, want to make sure your, your parents are in there uh, or anybody that's important to you, it's a real easy way to keep track of those contacts. And then it'll actually let you know if it's benefits planning, housing, or who they are related to you too. 
And sometimes if you're working with a lot of people, it can be hard to remember, you know, who's doing housing and who's helping me with my MA and who's helping me with work. And that can help you keep straight in this too. Jack, you have a kudos in the chat. These are great resources. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know if you can answer this, but as I'm looking at this and also thinking about potentially putting like medical information or a form like that in there, what are the privacy protections on the Disability Hub for the vault? Great question. Yep, everything is encrypted. Um, so it's a similar security to your healthcare information. Um, we don't even have access to it here at the Disability Hub. So let's say you lose your password, we wouldn't be able to retrieve that for you. So it's it's very much uh, you know, locked down. Um, we haven't had any issues ever with it, with it being hacked or anything like that. So knock on wood, <laughs> but uh, it is very safe. Thank you. So I'm gonna drop a survey in the chat. Um, if you guys could fill it out for us, that would be awesome. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah, and if you guys have questions after this too, always feel free to reach out to us. We'd be happy to answer anything. I know I always think of questions after the fact, which isn't helpful, so uh, not a problem for us. We are also on Facebook, um, so we have a live presence there. We um, do giveaways, um, any updated information that's going on right now with benefits in the state. So check us out on Facebook. Thank you, Kadra, and thank you, Jack, for spending time with us today and sharing all of this information and um, answering all of our questions. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Take care, guys. Bye. I'm going to stop our recording.